Now, 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, a group of bar employees being praised for their courageous acts overnight. How they managed to stop an armed man from hurting dozens of people. That story just ahead. And we have a traffic alert this morning. Police are working to remove a downed tree on a Lexington roadway. Some storm cleanup out there. Also, college could soon be more expensive for students in Kentucky. How tuition increases could affect the future of education. Just ahead. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. I'm Meredith Jones. I'm Bill Bryant. So good to have you with us on WKYT This Morning, <laughs> and uh, good to have Meredith in with Thank us. Thank you. And for Michelle, who has a day off, uh, who's been filling in uh, for Rebecca. And it's good to have you along with us this morning. We have uh, had some thunderstorms in the overnight hours. Kept me up for a bit yeah. last night. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was loud from time to time. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris and see if this is uh, going away. No, it's not going away. We actually have the front right over us. And what that means is, as long as the front is around, that will give way to some showers and thunderstorms as we progress throughout the next 48 to 72 hours. Outside right now, just some showers. Not a big issue, but still heads up for a passing light shower. Early this morning, we're at 61 degrees here in Lexington. 60s all around us, and as we approach the afternoon, 78 degrees. Storms are back in the forecast. Our focus of the forecast, obviously, are the rounds of thunderstorms. Now, do we look for any severe weather? We had a couple of warnings yesterday. Looks like we could have a, a, another a couple or a few today and tomorrow, too. But what about Friday off into your weekend? I mean, do we see a break? Anytime soon. I'm going to have that coming up in a few minutes. All right, looking for that break. We'll see. Let's get to the news now. <laughs> well, new this morning, patrons looking for a good time got quite the scare after a fight broke out at a Lexington bar. But thanks to some brave employees, nobody was injured despite the man responsible being armed with several different weapons. Let's go to WKYT's Mark Barber joining us live outside Max Karaoke on Lane Allen Road with the details on that. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. The thief who was swiping money from a donation jar here did not get far because a bartender and a DJ were not about to let him slip away. Even though the man was armed with a gun and a knife, they took him down. The takedown happened here at Max Karaoke Bar about two hours ago on Lane Allen Road. The bartender and the DJ confronted the armed man when they realized he was pocketing cash from the DJ's tip jar. He pulled out a gun when they tried to stop him, but the two workers tackled the man to the ground. So I approached him. He pulled a gun out. Patty, the bartender, she helped, you know, she helped get the guy to put his hand down and we defuse her and I defused the situation. Police then arrested the man after the two people here at the bar took him down. Police say that his name is not available yet, although he has been charged with first degree robbery. We're told that we could learn later this morning who this man is, but at this time he's still being processed and booked into the Fayette County Detention Center. Now, the two people who stopped the crook from getting away with the cash here at the bar this morning, they were looking out for one of their special customers. Coming up at 5:30, we'll explain how they protected a pregnant woman who was in the bar during those intense moments. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, and uh, we'll have more details as we get them on that situation. We thank you, Mark. Also new this morning, Lexington police say a man was shaken up after hitting a tree early this morning. It happened shortly after midnight when a man ran into a downed tree on Military Pike. Police say they're not sure why the tree fell, but they believe it occurred sometime during some of those rounds of thunderstorms last evening. Police say the driver was not injured and was able to drive his vehicle home. At last check, the roadway remains closed, though, in both directions this morning. A college education in the Bluegrass State could soon be more costly for future students. That's right. State regulators now approve tuition increases after the governor cut funding to higher education during an intense legislative session. Now, the same legislative session that also brought a lawsuit against the governor. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner joins us live to explain the breakdown. Good morning. Students right here at the University of Kentucky are among students statewide at colleges and universities that could see a tuition hike. Now, state regulators have capped that hike at $500 a year. News of potential tuition increases comes after an intense legislative session. Governor Bevin, in his first year, cut millions in state spending on colleges and universities. Some Democratic state lawmakers still aren't pleased with cuts in the two-year operating budget. 
A STATE JUDGE HAS RULED THREE DEMOCRATIC LAWMAKERS CAN JOIN A LAWSUIT SEEKING TO STOP THE GOVERNOR FROM CUTTING SPENDING ON COLLEGES AND UNIVERSITIES. RIGHT NOW, BEVIN IS OVERSEAS, BUT HIS SPOKESWOMAN SAYS THAT WON'T PREVENT HIM FROM ISSUING VETOES OF THE STATE'S TWO-YEAR BUDGET. HE HAS UNTIL MIDNIGHT TONIGHT TO ISSUE THOSE VETOES. NOW, JUST BECAUSE re STATE REGULATORS HAVE APPROVED A TUITION INCREASE OF UP TO $500 A YEAR DOESN'T MEAN IT WILL NECESSARILY HAPPEN. THOSE INDIVIDUAL COLLEGES AND UNIVERSITIES WILL HAVE TO DECIDE WHAT A TUITION HIKE WOULD LOOK LIKE FOR THEM. LIVE IN LEXINGTON, CAITLIN SETNER, WKYT. Thank you, Caitlin. Well, things became heated during the Knox County Board of Education meeting. Now, hundreds of people gathered wanting to know why the board decided not to renew the superintendent's contract. Last month, the board voted three to two not to keep Kelly Sprinkles as superintendent past June 30th when his contract expires. Since then, community members have shown support of keeping Sprinkles, but those who voted not to keep him still won't give a reason why. Now, with former chair Dexter Smith resigning last week, the two board members in favor of Sprinkles' motion to revote on his contract last night. After a 2-2 vote, the two voting for Sprinkles demanded an explanation from the two voters who voted against him. We just gave this young man an evaluation. We had one board member that abstained from that evaluation. Now, if you cannot evaluate this young man, why are you going to vote to destroy his career? By law, the Knox County School Board must have at least three votes in favor of a motion for it to pass. Now, because of that, the Kentucky Education Commissioner has started the process to appoint a new board chairman. Now, the two members who voted against renewing Sprinkles' contract, board member Vicki Gray and vice chairman Merle Smith, they refused to explain their decision before walking out of last night's meeting. Time is coming up on 507 on WKYT, and investigators say they think they now know why a woman fell to her death last month at Raven Run in Lexington. According to the city's accident report, Katie Stewart fell after leaving a marked trail to get a closer look at some animals. The director of the Parks and Recreation Department says that Stewart was more than 100 feet past the sign reading, Park Border Do Not Cross. One hiker says he still feels safe at Raven Run, but always makes sure to stay on the beaten path. If you intentionally go off the trail, there's all sorts of land to do it, but there's no real reason to do it because it's easy to get lost. Public Safety Commissioner Ronnie Baston says nothing could have been done differently to save Stewart. The report does mention putting up railings and barriers in the park, but it also says barriers would decrease Raven Run's natural integrity. After three years in business, a well-known Lexington restaurant has shut down. The owner of Coba Cocina on Richmond Road says it won't be reopening. Lee Greer says the business was losing too much money. But he says he's thankful for all of the loyal customers and employees. Now, if you have a Coba gift card, you still will be able to use it at both Cheddar's restaurants in Lexington or at Willie's locally known on Southland Drive. That closing has uh, intrigued a lot of people. It's our most looked at story on our web this morning, yeah. uh, certainly, and uh, it was a different concept. I think a lot of people enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. It was. It was always yeah. amusing to watch the jellyfish, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> it was a sight. <laughs> Evidently, that didn't pay enough of bills, right? No. Okay. <laughs> WKYT this morning on the air with all the latest, and it's so good to have you along on your Wednesday morning at now 508. A pair of brothers in Michigan have successfully completed their 100 mile walk for a good cause. A look at their heartwarming determination just ahead. We have showers over us right now. We get a bit of a break as we go through the day, and once we hit the afternoon and evening hours, there comes some more thunderstorms. We're going to go over that forecast. I'm going to jot down the timing coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We have the showers around with a few rumbles of thunder sparking up back toward Bowling Green, but most of that is going to stay pretty much south of us. We're going to see those showers roll on through as we're making our way out and about early this morning. You may run into a few of those, but no real thunderstorm action as of right now, but that's what we're watching as that continues to make its way eastbound. If it does affect our region, if it sticks together, we'll see that right around the Cumberland Parkway as you make your way back towards Somerset, probably your best bet, and south of there. But really, we're focusing in on 
the West, because the West is where most of the energy lies, and it's heading our direction. We will get this later on today. None of this is a high-impact event. It's going to be much like yesterday, where we only had about three or four warnings out and about as it traveled on through, and that's pretty much what we're going to be seeing today, a low and severe weather threat once again, but nonetheless, these things are loud as they pass on through, especially the timing on that. It was awful yesterday. Evening and night wasn't good for a lot of us trying to get the kiddos down and trying to get ourselves down, right? So here's the deal. Once we go through the day, we will get big breaks in the action. You'll be able to get out, run some errands. You'll be able to get out to the grocery store, get the kids out and about. But once we hit late afternoon off into the evening hours, here come some more thunderstorms rolling on through. And like I said, a lot of lightning within these, a lot of heavy downpours. Some of us picked up one to two inches of rain just yesterday. And so we're going to add to that. It was very isolated, but nonetheless, I mean, you, you can see it's very heavy rain. Slight risk back toward the west. That's the best area where you see the, the yellow shade. That's the best chance for severe weather. The reason being, because the timing on it. It comes throughout the day, and especially as we head off toward our region, we're talking about a marginal risk. So you can see the legend at the top, slight risk and marginal, kind of on the lower end of that severe weather threat, which is okay with a lot of us. Marginal risk around this area. And believe it or not, on Facebook and on Twitter, I had more people say, I just enjoy these thunderstorms, not the severe weather, but just thunderstorms rolling on by. People, some people actually like the thunderstorms. Some people don't. I get it. But some people actually like it later on in the afternoon, off into the evening hours, especially before you go to bed. You don't want to lay down, and here comes some storms rolling on through. So today, more storms in the forecast late in the day. Then we hit tomorrow. Guess what? More storms in the forecast. It's just going to be a pretty rainy period as we continue to travel through the next 48 hours. Friday is your day to do all your outdoor activities, knock out some yard work because it will be dry on Friday. Then Saturday, I would say the first half of the day looks mainly dry. Second half of your day is when some storms start to move on in. This has increased a few hours on these particular models the past few uh, few days. So we'll just have to watch that closely, see if it increases in time. Because you got to remember, Keeneland's going on. A lot happening as we travel throughout the next few days. Friday will be packed for Keeneland because that's the day that actually looks mostly dry. Once we hit the weekend, here comes another storm system in the forecast. But it is spring. You expect this. And uh, it's pretty heavy rain out of this. A lot of heavy mm -hmm. rain as these storms pass on through. So, Well, it was uh, calm before it got volatile here. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is exactly We had some right. nice days. We, have yes. to we did. Yeah. We did. <laughs> They'll be back, I'm yeah, sure. Uh, we Sooner. We know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> 515, our time on WKYT this morning. Yeah, that's right. More than 100 mile piggyback ride to raise awareness of cerebral palsy ended successfully at the Michigan State Capitol. Hunter Gandhi started walking last week as if the trip wasn't long enough on foot. He carried his younger brother, nine year old Braden, right there on his back. Braden suffers from cerebral palsy, and his brother Hunter did the run to challenge himself along with others to see how hard it is to live with different limitations. Just seeing uh, how he fights through everything and fights through all the hard work that he has to go through and how he does it with a positive attitude. And I wanted to just, uh, you know, try and help him out in some way. Braden ditched the piggyback ride a bit early and completed the last half mile walk to the Capitol on his own. Hunter says their goal is to make the world a more inclusive place. And uh, what a way to start, huh? <laughs> yeah, that is. That's incredible, though, that he, you know, walked that half mile to yeah. the Capitol. That's really rewarding. Yeah, touching story. Mm -hmm. All right, good to have you along with us. Wednesday morning on WKYT, it's hump day, and we have all <laughs> the latest news for you right here. I hope you'll stay with us. That's right. When we return, we'll have a look at your money. A first for Apple, but not in a good way. And how Lyft is targeting millennials. I'm Jill Wagner, and all those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Welcome back in WKYT this morning on the air after the uh, storms of the overnight hours. Hope you got some rest and uh, good to have you along. <laughs> iPhone sales are slowing. Lower oil prices are hurting big energy companies. That's right. And Lyft commercials, well, they're coming to the TV. Jill Wagner has the latest on your money. Sales of Apple's iPhones are slowing down for the first time ever with fewer people upgrading their phones. Apple says it sold 51.2 million iPhones in the past quarter, down from the year before. Overall, revenue also fell for the first time in a decade. Apple shares dropped in after hours trading. On Wall Street, the Dow gained 13 points on Tuesday, the Nasdaq dropped seven. 
Lower oil prices are good for drivers, but they're hurting big energy companies. BP says its earnings in the first quarter plunged by 79 percent, dragged down by low oil prices. The company is also still paying for the Gulf of Mexico oil spill back in 2010. Expenses related to the spill totaled more than $900 million last quarter alone. And ride hailing company Lyft is rolling out its first national TV commercial. It targets millennials with the message, riding is the new driving. The commercial highlights all the things that can go wrong as a car owner, from parking tickets to fender benders. And that is your CBS Money Watch report. For more, follow me on Twitter at Jill Wagner CBS. In New York, I'm Jill Wagner. Well, being a Costco member might cost you more beginning next year. A UBS analyst predicts the warehouse giant may be planning a membership price hike of anywhere from $5 to $10 starting in 2017. The annual fee for Costco's basic Gold Star membership is currently $55, and the executive membership is $110. Analysts note that Costco has historically increased its membership fee about every five to six years. The last increase was in November of 2011. However, Costco tells CNN Money there are no discussions to raise membership fees at this time. So we'll uh, keep watch on that yeah. for you. Good to have you along. 521 on WKYT this morning as you rise and shine. Get ready to go. We have a lot more coming up for you. That's right. Sports is on the way. That's next. It is all basketball when we come back. Matthew Mitchell has a press conference scheduled for later today because he's had two coaches leave and other players left. But a former assistant supposedly is coming back to the program. And also Charles Matthews had a medical situation. I'll tell you all about it coming up next. Have a bit of a rain chance early this morning. Scattered showers out in the back. A couple of rumbles of thunder sparking up back west of I-65. So not in our viewing area just yet, but we'll watch that closely as it travels eastbound. And look, we're going to go through the day. You will get some big, long breaks in the action as we travel through your day. However, storms will be on the increase once we approach the late afternoon off into the evening hours once again as the system's just not moving out, not just yet. Another 48 hours of these on and off showers and thunderstorms. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Good morning, everybody. The NBA released the draft early entry list last night. And contrary to John Calipari's early comments, it does not include every player on his team. There are five Wildcats on the list. Tyler Eulis, Jamal Murray, Scala Vissier, Marcus Lee, and Isaiah Briscoe. Lee and Briscoe have not hired an agent and could still return to college. The entire early entry list consists of 102 players, including 117 from American colleges and 45 international players. UK card Charles Matthews had a minor surgery, minor procedure yesterday. He posted this picture last night on his Instagram account with the caption, thanks everyone for all the love, really appreciate it. Minor setback for a major comeback. I'll be better than ever. Matthews is expected to be fully healthy in time for summer workouts. What's going on with the UK women's basketball program? A couple of days ago, freshman Batuli Kamara left the program and assistant Tamika Williams Jeter resigned. Yesterday, the Herald Leader reporting Kyra Elsey could be coming back as an assistant. Elsey started Oldham County, left UK in 2012 when she was UK's recruiting coordinator. She joined the Tennessee staff where she played. Elsie was an assistant for the Lady Vols until three weeks ago when she left Knoxville. Since the end of the season, Mitchell has lost Adini Amadou and Tamika Williams Jeter off of his staff. Elsie's hiring could affect McDonald's All American Lindsay Corsero, who is reportedly reopening her commitment or recruitment. Excuse me, Corsero committed to the Wildcats two years ago, but is the second commit in two days to announce she was backing out of her verbal agreement with UK. Matthew Mitchell is scheduled to speak with the media this afternoon concerning the recent changes in his program. That's a look at sports. We hope you have a great day.